come along today just to really highlight the fact that occupational therapy, we are so much more than paper mache and bingo. Yeah, so we've moved on from basket weaving, wherever that came from. We've moved on. Do you have basket weaving yet? Um, so just introduce ourselves. So I'm Norma Henderson and I am a occupational therapist in qualified since 1998 um, and I'm the deputy AHP and practice leader for inpatients and crisis teams at TNPT and I love all my dog and I'm making movies. And today we don't really know who we are because we need to use our points to tell you all about this. So I'm Sue, I am an occupational therapist and um, I've been in the service for about 17 years and making career change, yeah, that was at the end of the night um, and then came over here in 2012, I love every second of it. We have so many challenges that, that we come across in everyday life to support people on their way to recovery, you know what I mean, it's amazing. Um, and outside of work, I'm quite boring, you know, family, walking, craft projects, um, and through Covid, spend a lot of time doing stuff from the start of the world, yeah, talking to people, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so this is where this is not talking too much. Um, this is where you find us we are situated across all of Ken. We've got inpatient units ranging from Dartford down to the family and community teams as you can see dotted around from over the So um, for me the diversity of mental health environment enables occupational therapists to do what they do best. It enables us to find ways of engagement, occupational purpose to assess patients who have access to services. And for occupational therapists, engagement, occupational assessment is not a one size fits all. It's a process to improve the outcomes of well to enable participation in meaningful occupation. But to promote good mental health and assist recovery based on individual patient need. So it's not all paper mache and bingo dance and bingo and home services. We are so much more than Actually, they are actually a pain to get to the back. The one thing about pain and pressure that we all say, although we're not saying just pain and pressure, I do have a pain and pressure. So, a question for you guys. Um, we want you to think about the last time you sat and did nothing. Not thinking, not having a tea, not having a cigarette, just, just sat. Not, being for meditation or anything else. Who's sat and done nothing in the last day? Last week? Last month? Last six months? So, is that it? Um, so, next time then. So, do you recognise that as you are? I mean, I don't know what you mentioned. And for people in mental health services, restoring that occupational balance is a key fact for the gain and maintaining your well-being. So this is what we do in KMGT. We use different types of occupation to observe and assess motivation, stamina, endurance, range of motion, and process skills, initiating and ending of tasks. We use this information to develop strategies and skills to promote well-being and recovery. And because we're all about empty space and empty, improving how wonderful we are, even if we don't want to, and um, all of our interventions are linked to uh, many of the interventions, um, most of which are recognised with really nice guidance, um, even if loosely so, but they are in there. Um, they might not say OT, but this is what we do. So these, these interventions work across all of our all of our services, all of our care groups, all of our individuals, and um, not all of them, but most of them in the community as well. So there's a list up there, I'm not going to talk through all of them because I think everybody's ready to see how it's all day. So how do we stand out? What makes us unique? We're forever saying how unique we are. Um, so for us in KMBT, we use the model of human occupation um, as the framework for our assessments. We have multiple assessment tools available to us. It enables, it enables us to record our observations and assessments way that can be shared across all of the care group services that all got access to these um, and it's detailed and, and structured. 
the assessments like all of us as OTs, there are a mix of direct observation, uh, self reported feedback and potential care reported feedback. Um, and for the MOPO, we look at 24 different domains to um, get as much of that overall functioning. Um, and if we use our, if we use our assessments as properly, we reduce the need for a very long process. So we thought we'd be clever here, so we've presented this to nurses and medics this slide. Um, on your left, because I'm obviously very knowledgeable about left and right, there's different domains that we look at as OTs using this framework. Some of the other tools we use in mental health are the honest, so they have the health of the nation outcome scale. That has up to 14 different areas that we look at, and the read of is a quality of life um, person with important outcome measure. So as you can see from that, our mobile covers absolutely everything apart from any other um, We wanted to show off about this. We are the only trust, the only trust um, that has got MoPo embedded in our patient record system. And in the background of that, while our staff are doing the, the, the valuable information, all the wordy stuff. We've got a program in the background put all together in numerical data so we have these beautiful charts to show people where their progress is, how well they're performing. We can use it in the MDT to evidence our interventions, we'll make a bit of education, um, but also about what the whole team is doing. So we all know that the teams we don't work in isolation, we work in teams. We took this to our older person's SMT a few weeks ago. Our mobile assessment is going to be our inpatient outcome measure for our old regular. So, yeah, so I want to talk about innovation. New ways of working have been introduced in KMT, the crisis resolution by a treatment team, or in the process of reporting occupational therapists specifically to work with people in mental health crisis, using occupational therapy specific interventions to enable recovery. And I can see one from the new jobs. Occupational therapists have always been part of the MDT and crisis teams service was developed and implemented. However, this has been in a generic capacity and as such the opportunity to do operational therapy has been diluted due to time and crisis. This is really exciting. So East Cape Crisis team embraced the development of the operational therapy role and are seeing results. The team's value of operational therapy and advocate the interventions provided. So what does this mean? Development of self soothe packs for people experiencing anxiety and depression. These are all made up individually for the community assessment. So we'll take a note of that person's name. Colouring relaxation books. These are all accessible for the team to actually take out to patients. You can see here this one's a um, this one's a uh, obviously the dogs and the ones that are lots of things in there for that particular patient to think about what they can do with their own self soothe and self monitoring. And we have got to um, develop during COVID and I'm going to lock down staff participation booklets. And these actually were developed by Justin Mills, who's one of our own teams uh, in the crisis team. And um, this was put on Instagram and we've been able to find and see the answers to the crisis for these particular booklets. Because during that time, we only looked to do during the lockdown, we only looked to do a little more isolation and we get stuck. And we're in the process at the moment of looking at developing the crisis team app as a policy improvement project. So that's an app for patients to be able to access when they're out and about, um, you know, if you're anxious and you want to be feeling anxiety for Tesco, for instance, it's not a good idea to kind of lie down and just do a while because that can draw attention to yourself. So if you have an app, nobody looks at you when you're using the phone. So this is actually something. So this is a new project, and we're going to get that up in the next one. So what does this mean for our patients? So this is Justine's um, little blurb about what it means for patients. So she says she's been working for the North East Cape Crisis team um, for two years, and recently she decided to apply for the new dedicated role of specialist OT. As the focus was more centred around home treatment, assessing and facilitating practical interventions, I think it's a generic way to the crisis team to get them to do the lots of generic work. Actually, you know, we've got that to basics, this is what we need to do. 
Um, she says, I found this new role to be more beneficial for patients. I've been able to spend a lot of time completing full non-host assessments. Is that Justin coming in yes. now? Justin, you just saw the battery. Um, uh, just to make sense of their mental health crisis, and how this relates to their emotional and relaxed care. Um, I have also been able to work consistently with the patient and have time to plan and initiate interventions, for example, doing work and exposure sessions, assist with social anxiety, and doing shopping or leaving their home. Craft sessions have been facilitated in the patient's home to increase motivation and support recovery in a familiar environment, and this has been effective in supporting patients to access groups in the community. I think what we've got here is the ability to have time and consistency with the patient and which we will work beneficial in their recovery. So working closely with patients, getting to know them as individuals and having the time to make a difference gives them great satisfaction in their own role and respect to the And I have really failed to change in how home treatment is delivered and have found a more practical approach and more effective for patients progress, which has resulted in more houses. She urges our teams to get into their clinical roles. I would say that is absolutely necessary for us to get into the clinical We need to put the other two families back on the map. Is this me? Can I continue? So, nobody wants to do mental health services forever. So, our idea is that people coming through the front door, we support them and really have a good way to recovery. And people go off and on their merry way. So as part of that, we need signposts and support people with access and community resources, co-production work alongside staff and, and other people that's really big in our trust at the moment. Um, we've got lots of service users and carers and next service users and carers who join us in redesigning and developing our, our services. Um, and it's an absolute honour to work with them, it really is. Um, our, we have our crisis resolution and treatment team which helps people who don't need to be in hospital anymore to, to go home, back to their own setting and to prevent them coming into hospital in the first place wherever possible. That, that, that's the main thing. Um, our dementia and boys and empowerment groups so are absolutely out there fighting to reduce <coughs> stigma and you know, and, and they've told us to account to their own BT. They are absolutely wonderful people, there's loads of blurb on our website about them. Um, engagement in safe havens, so there's a place to go to, to feel safe if things are rough at that moment in time, not only patient admission. We have a patient engagement council, service users and carers from across all of the care groups are involved in that. And again, they hold us to a and get involved in the projects. Um, peer support working, we employ peer support workers so people who have a lived experience to come back into services and share their knowledge, share, share their wealth, share their experience to help other people um, get better. Vocational rehab team, our vocational rehab team has been in the news and, and recognised and, and awarded um, so many times. They help people with a uh, long-term severe enduring illness to get back into work. Because lots of employers are like, oh no, I don't want to do that. They come from work-based placements in the NBT for a period of time. And we have employed um, people through that service back into the trust as well. And then, then volunteering, as well as um, external to the trust, you can volunteer specifically within the whole trust and we will open you. Um, and you will welcome you very long as you can get to please. Um, and then signposting again, the community groups, the craft groups, the men's sheds, active retirement associations, pastoral support, the local library, there's loads of things up there. Um, Safe Havens, we've mentioned, Recovery College. We're really proud of our Recovery College. It's, it started off in Fanny, it's gone online through COVID, it's now trust wide. You don't have to be a service user to sign up, you can be absolutely anybody, and everybody's an equal <coughs> You sign up as a student, you don't sign up as staff or always know I've been in, in there. So, so that's really wonderful. Um, colleges, universities, systems, and life or anything else you can think about. So we're going to ask you, are you looking for a career in KMT? We've got expanding new roles for professional therapists, uh, multiple methods of engaging people in mental occupation, you name it, we've probably used it. And we've got some of us outside 